Hey guys, welcome to another patch coming out today on May 2nd. Right now it's uh, 9 o'clock Amsterdam time, uh, 2nd of May, and uh, it isn't out yet, but it should be out later today. That means when you see this video, this patch is out already. Got a couple of things coming, some map changes, mods changes, some bug fixes, balance and AI changes. Let's jump into it. Team game map sizes have been reduced across the board, basically by one size in every single category. We have uh, we now support playing 4 on 4 on the large map size down from, I think it was gigantic or whatever. 3v3, one down from large to medium. These options are also supported for custom games before it was capped uh, on, uh, on, on a higher amount. In quick match, 2 on 2 games will be played on small instead of medium. 3v3 games on medium down from large and 4 on 4 on large down from gigantic. And updated how the spawns on Warring Islands work in case of uneven teams. Then, for 1 on 1 Altai, the amount of trees on Altai has been increased. In addition to starting dense forests, uh, numerous small dense forests have also been added. So I actually found that to be a pretty interesting defining feature. I found that to be a pretty interesting defining feature of uh, Altai that would eventually would run out uh, rather than uh, rather than it essentially being infinite on a map like Highview. Because of the map layout, Altai can be a little turtly as well, and I found lumber scarcity to be an interesting concept. So, uh, yeah, the qu I guess the question is, and, and this is kind of a leading into a question in general, how much resources should be available on every map? Should there be a practically limitless amount of wood and it's more about conquering your right to exploit that resource? Or should there be a limited amount? So when you look at StarCraft 2, it is rare for resources to run out, but it is very common to fight over common resources, like expansions that are exactly in between the two of you. I have had games, even on big maps, I think there was a map called Entombed Valley. Absolutely enormous map. I had like six bases. You can't even really properly saturate that many bases. It was Protoss against Zerg, made a large army, and the Zerg had like one base or no base. And I killed all of his bases, then he uprooted all his spore crawlers, kind of like Mongols, unpacking, uh, packing up their buildings and moving around with their buildings. He had an unbeatable army and moving buildings, and he would protect them with his army, but he wasn't gathering anything. But because his army was so cost efficient, Brute Lord Investor Queen, uh, I couldn't beat him. So I had every single base on the map, and then I tried to make a 20k, 20k bank, sacrifice workers, make max army, and I still couldn't beat him. So uh, in, in that case, there were limited resources, but the army was uh, infinitely strong. In Warcraft 3, you take a map like Echo Isles, you've got two bases each. Resource scarcity is very common. By about 40 minutes or so, both of you have run out of income in both bases. And if you haven't decided the game yet by then, uh, well, typically one runs out quicker than the other. And if you run out quicker, you have to attack. But there could be a turtle, uh, a turtle situation there as well. But eventually, because there are no more resources, there's no point but to fight or I guess to offer a draw. And because in Age of Empires 4, there's infinite food, as unlike in AoE 2, farms don't require a wood impetus to generate food. So you've got infinite food. You've got infinite gold because of all the gold generation mechanics, relics, sacred sites, unique Sith mechanics. Every Sith has a gold generation mechanic. So you can always keep making knights and men at arms, which cost food and gold. And in theory, you could sell both to get stone and to get wood, but that gets more and more expensive. The point is, wood is the only real important resource that becomes scarce. Stone is a luxury of defense, but wood is part of every building and almost every unit. So I find wood scarcity a good thing. And the question is, should there even be more gold scarcity? Scarcity? Uh, should we have so much unique gold generation mechanics? Well, that's a question and a discussion for another time. But I think it is an important discussion to have and, and maybe for the devs to think about whether just because there is scarcity, therefore it doesn't necessarily need extra wood or does it? Maybe it is about 
the conquest of space of influence area maybe that's what it is but i think uh this should not happen mountain pass trade posts on mountain pass have been moved to spawn halfway between the corner of the map and wherever the mountain range hits the map edge this should help ease cases of trade being too vulnerable as soon as one team loses the central pass okay i think it was sometimes quite close to the mountain pass and then maybe it could get harassed french pass to open up the map a bit more in french pass we've uh, shortened the mountain ranges i think that's probably a good change i like french pass and mountain pass but french pass ends up being quite turtly and people uh, complain about that with bigger walls to break through on the sides there will be more action boulder bay tuning down to player spawning to ensure that the maps load correctly and place players and their teams in the correct area so no more 3v3 and a 2v4 setup in team games danube river a few tweaks to make trade more viable and open up more play options for the hill side of the map both trade posts will now spawn in opposing corners of the hill okay so you don't have to like have a trade route that typically goes through the danube river and then can get harassed by boats and stuff maybe now it's from corner to corner is a more optimal route sacred sites have been moved a bit one is now near the edge of the map on the island ah so not not at the the stub part but at the beginning of the stub okay where the old island trade post spawned and one is in the center of the hill with a new path leading down to the bridge the center of the hill with a new path leading down to the bridge oh there'll be a third path away from the hill interesting before you could only reach it from left and right let's say or top and bottom Ilbred Miscreant says, I agree, I think the scarcity of trees is interesting and makes for unique gameplay. This sounds like an attempt to normalize resources across maps. Yes. Two boar have been added to the center of the island to maintain, to increase its economic importance. A couple of mod changes. Some memory leaks when browsing through mods. Royal Rumble mod, you can no longer convert the enemy king and break the Royal Rumble mod mod and an issue where players could delete their own king in the royal rumble mod mod probably instantly losing fix the issue now balance changes stone walls under construction can now be assaulted by all units not just siege so you can have infantry archers and so on attacking stonewall segments that are in construction and keep in mind that things in construction take 50 percent bonus damage but also keep in mind that stone walls do still have armor a lot of armor don't they i think they probably have 50 armor just like every other building in the game well if that's the case then wouldn't it be true that uh that you do almost no significant damage at all i don't think it would be very significant damage but something is more than nothing i suppose can get some torch damage in ah torch damage ignores uh ignores armor so maybe you can get some knights and infantry doing some damage though i don't know how many units would be required to let's say out damage one villager building it because villagers build fast on stone walls chinese extra materials no longer stacks on single wall segments so that should probably take care of the issue where you can have 30 watchtowers 30 outposts behind the stone wall from chinese they have the chinese great wall uh, upgrade and they have court architect upgrade and four bombers cannot kill a stone wall because it instant regenerates from it and it's also only going to cover repair range to four tiles instead of 12 and a half added an ra ui which shows the ability range of chinese towers and outposts after researching extra materials so that's nice fix some ai issues and general fixes hotkeys bound to control alter shift only are now working properly after relaunching the game Fix the bug that allowed the player to track selected enemy units into the fog of war. Villagers no longer become stuck gathering sheep if they were gathering from deer or boar. Nice. 
Fix a bug that would sometimes cause units to become unresponsive to attack commands against a specific enemy. Where nested bees could be animation cancelling essentially. Wow, I didn't abuse that, sad. Fix the bug where annihilation victory could not be achieved if a player had unconstructed siege units stamped by infantry on the map. What? Unconstructed siege units count as landmarks. <laughs> Hashtag coded as landmark. Wow. Fix an issue where the Elsbach Palace description did not communicate its influence bonus in the French translation. The Elsbach Place. <laughs> Fix the issue where the Delhi Sultanate military construction mastery could not be completed despite fulfilling the requirements. And that's it. And we also have some new challenges and rewards. Season 1 event 2, Sounds of Reverie. Alright, that's it. Patch. It's a small one. <laughs>